Hi there, guys. So in 14P, we're going to look at the probability of making type 1 and type 2 errors. So uh, this is, again, quite a nice extension. I know this chapter is, is going on for a long time, but um, it's a pretty nice extension, in fact. So we're looking at some conditional probabilities here, essentially. Now, the classic little one for type 1 and type 2 errors is this. OK, so a type 1 error. Here we go. We've got uh, the doctor saying to a man here, you're pregnant. So that's us accepting the alternative hypothesis here, which is you're pregnant and that you are not not pregnant. Um, so you're accepting the alternative hypothesis when that's not true. And it's clearly not true in this case. So that's what we're calling here a false positive an acceptance of H1 when H0 is in fact true. Now, normally, that's just the significance level of the test. So, for example, it's a 5% significance level of the test. So, normally, a type 1 error happens 5% of the time. However, that's slightly different if you're not talking about continuous distributions. Now, remember back when we dealt with Poisson distributions and binomial distributions, we couldn't always ensure that we had exactly 5% in the critical region. So with discrete distributions, it's often smaller than the significance level. So it's the actual probability of being in that critical region. It's not necessarily the significance level that was stated by the statistician in the first place. OK, um, now a type 2 error is this one here. It's saying you're not pregnant when clearly, clearly this person is. And so that would be an example of a type 2 error. That's where we're rejecting the alternative hypothesis when the uh, when the, the alternative hypothesis, the distribution behind that, or, or whatever the alternative hypothesis is, is actually true. Now, this is slightly more difficult to work out, in fact. Um, and this one they're calling they're calling this a false negative. So we're saying that in fact we accept the um, null hypothesis in this case, and so we're accepting that we're, we're we're not accepting the alternative hypothesis, and so that's a false. Um, we're not getting a positive result from this. We're not getting H1 to be followed. So it's a negative result, but it's a false negative. OK, as I said, it's slightly more difficult to work out. Now, um, they give this in terms of like, like this notation here. So just move me down a little bit. OK, so they give it uh, in this notation here. Mm, it's a little tricky to understand. It says C stands for the test statistic being in the critical region. So normally when the test statistic is in the critical region, that is essentially saying that we accept H1. So it's the result of accepting H1. That's what C is standing for here when H0 is really true. OK, so it's the outcome of our test based on what's really true okay and let's look at type 2 errors here so type 2 error it's saying in this case it's the result being um, that we accept h0 essentially there so that's the outcome being in the non-critical region um, even though h1 is actually true OK, well, let's look at this through a question. And in particular, in this question, I'm going to make sure that I draw a graph on this one or draw some version of a graph, because then it will make a little bit more sense as well. The book doesn't do that. OK, so let's look at example 18 here. It says a machine produces components needed for a software company. The probability of a fault occurring in the production of a single component has to be less than 0.02. Sample size of 50 is taken from the output and tested to see if any were faulty. Test was, was performed with the hypotheses that H0 is that the probability is 0 
and H1 is that the probability is greater than 0 0.02. We're doing this at a 5% significance level. Now, hopefully that's fairly obvious that it's a binomial distribution. So the tests are either um, faulty. So test the, each trial of this uh, test is for each of the, the 50 in the sample either gives us um, uh, a failure of the test or success of the test. So faulty or not faulty, faulty being seen to be a success in this, in this case, in this test. And the, the probability at which that's happening is um, at 1 in 50, um, 0 0.02. So there we go. For, for, for the first part of this question, we can say, let x be the number of faults in the sample. So x is binomially distributed with um, n is 50 and p is 0 0.02. That's what we're testing. OK, and include any assumptions, additional assumptions that you're making. Uh, the assumptions are that the faults need to be independent of each other and that they occur with uh, an, equal, an equal probability. OK, for part B, it says find the critical value for this test. We, we didn't actually state what the uh, H0 and H1 was in this case, um, but H1 is, is obviously that the probability is not 0 0.02. Oh, sorry, it's there. OK, it's greater than 0 0.02. They've, they've stated it there. Sorry, I missed, it. missed that. OK, for part B, it says uh, find the critical region for this test. OK, so critical region, let's just ditch that. OK, to the other side, right? Here we go. So let's just do that. So let's ditch that and let's say, so the critical region of this test, in fact, let's get rid of me completely. Okay, let me. So we've got the binomial distribution here. Um, and we're talking about this uh, having success up to, could be up to 50. Um, so on this axis, this is X, X could be up to 50. And on this axis, we've got the probability, so the probability of that X is equal to X. And this is our lowercase x here. And so this is going up to 50 in this case. And obviously, this is going to be stacked towards the front. So we're not expecting many of these. So I don't know exactly what this is going to look like, but it's going to look something like this, I think, you know, something like this. And it's going to go like that. OK, and there's going to be very little chance of getting, you know, 50. Uh, 50 of these occurring. So it's going to be something like this. So I can't write, can't put that one in. <laughs> right. Oh, well, whatever. It carries on, right? It carries on to sort of nothing there. Okay. So that's roughly what this, this probability distribution is going to look like. It's going to be sort of positively skewed towards the front here. Okay. Now, um, the critical region for this test is, is, is if we get lots of faults somewhere over here, we're looking to have um, 5%. Let's change the color there. We'll try to change the color at least. Why is that working? Okay, so we're looking to have over here 5% um, or less than 5% in total. That's going to be the critical region. That's what we've dealt with before. So if this was a normal distribution, the, the critical region would just be 5%. It would be this because we because we'd have continuous data. But in this case, we're looking for the value at which we're getting the probability of x is greater than or equal to some critical value being for the first time less than or equal to 0 0.05. Okay, um, so there we go. That's actually this thing here. OK, now they do some sort of extra working out here. For, for me, I would just do this on the calculator. I'm going to show you that this really doesn't take long to work out. I know that the value needs to be quite close to the front because we can see it's, it's positively skewed here. So let's go to um, calculate and let's do binomial distributions. So, so menu, probability, distributions, binomial distribution. So binomial uh, CDF, which is B on my calculator. And the number of trials here is 50, and the probability of success is 0 0.02. So the lower bound is zero. The upper bound, let's go, I don't know, let's go, let's go five. Okay, let's press OK on that. And I can see that five is 
um, already given giving me uh, the chance of a chance of success of um, what am I doing? The chance of success of zero point nine 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 five. Okay, so I want the probability to be less than. 0.05. Oh, hang on, I've done it the wrong way around. I've done 0 to 5. So just copy and paste that one again. So I want it to be from 5 up to 50. Okay, so 5 up to 50. Okay, so I can see that that's giving me less than 1%. So I can see very quickly that I need a number which is less than 5. So let's go 3. So 3 to 50. And I'm seeing that that's now 7.8%. So clearly, the 4 is going to work here, but let me just check it out. Control paste. And so let's put in 4. So I'm doing binomial CDF with n is 50, probability is 0 0.02. And from 4 to 50 uh, gives me the answer of 0 0.1775. Okay, so that's the first time that I'm getting under 5%. So what I need is the probability. For this test to be, uh, for, for the alternative hypothesis to be accepted, I would need a, I would need four or more of the um, sample to show faults. So I would be looking at getting four or more faults. Now, four or more faults give us gives us an answer of one point seven eight percent. Okay, now that. Is the probability of a type one error. So, though the critical region is when x is greater than or equal to four, the actual probability of being in the critical region, getting an answer in the critical region, is actually only 1.78%. So, that is the, the chance of a type one error. That's the probability, let's just go back and check it out again. That's the probability of getting a false positive. That is to say that we, um, that we are accepting the um, alternative hypothesis when in fact the, no, the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so that one's nice and straightforward. Now, when it comes to part C, so I'm gonna just ditch this. There we go, can ditch that one there. Now, when it comes to part C, it says, this is the harder bit here. It's saying earlier testing indicates that the probability of a fault is actually 0.04. So now we're being told what the truth truth is in this situation. So we know in this case that the truth is that the probability is 0 0.04. So in fact, the distribution looks different. The distribution is much more skewed this way. So it's going to be a higher chance of getting a 4. OK, and lower chances of getting these things. So it's going to be something like skewed like this instead, going all the way up to 50 on this side. OK, so now what we're asking is, what's the probability based on the actual distribution that we are um, that we are in this? Let's change this color. OK. We're in these ones here, follow the orange, that we're, we're accepting the null hypothesis given that, in truth, we have this blue distribution. So that's what we're asking. The, the, the type 2 error is asking for us to say, well, what's the probability that we accepted H0 so that we, or rather, we didn't accept H1, so we didn't reject H0. So in other words, we get an answer which is in this section on the orange graph, when in truth we're following the distribution really follows the blue graph. Okay, so we want to be in this region on the blue graph because the blue graph is the reality. So it's this side essentially. So we're looking for put a red line on this one. Try and flick onto red. Won't allow it again. Okay, so we're talking about being in the acceptance, in the um, non-acceptance region, 
which is basically saying, what's the probability that we are less than or equal to three, given that we actually know that X is distributed by a binomial distribution, 50 comma um, 0.04, or in other words, the way in which they've written it, that P is equal to 0 0.04 instead. So we just need to answer this question now. So the probability that we're in the accept in the non-rejection region based on the fact that the real underlying distribution is different um, is our type 2 error. So what I'm going to need to do here is uh, probability again and distributions, and I'll need to do a binomial CDF, which is B on my calculator. Number of trials is 50. Probability of success is actually 0 0.04. The lower bound is 0. And the upper bound here is three. So we're going to check that one out. And we now get 86.086% uh, or 0 0.8608, or that's exactly what they're saying as an answer here as well. We're getting out the answer. Let's make it a little bit, a bit bigger. Getting out the answer here of 0 0.861. That's the probability of a type 2 error. Remember what that is? That's us um, being in the acceptance region not in the critical region, when in fact, uh, H0 is not true. What was H0? H0 was the probability was 0 0.02, but in fact, the probability is actually 0 0.04. Okay, that's fairly tricky to get your head around. And part Cs are difficult questions. Okay, so you're gonna need to remember you're going to need to remember this for type 1 as an error, for a type 1 error, and this for a type 2 error. And for a type 1 error, you need to realize that that's pretty much the same as your significance level, although it's not in a discrete situation. And in this case, you need to realize that you're going to need to compare to um, once you get more information about the background distribution, you'll need to compare your chance uh, of being in the non-critical region, which you all have worked out earlier in the in the question, from this new dis new background distri distribution which you're being given. Okay, right. So uh, example 19. Now we we'll do another one because I think that they're fairly difficult to get your head around, but it feels pretty pretty good once you get it sorted out. So example 19, it says, in order to satisfy um, quality control, the mean number of flaws, faults in aluminium sheets must be less than or equal to 0 0.6 floors per meter length. A length of seven meters is inspected. So uh, 0 0.6 times by seven, if we scale up this Poisson distribution, um, is going to give us uh, floors of 4.2 floors expected um, per seven meters. Okay, it says, assuming that the, the number of floors follows a Poisson distribution, A, state the distribution of the number of floors in a length sampled. Okay, so that's nice and easy. That's X follows a Poisson distribution with, whoop, oh, that was interesting. Okay, so that's just saying that X follows a Poisson distribution of 4.2. It's nice and simple. Part B, so state the hypotheses for these tests. Well, that's really, you can see here, it's extremely straightforward. You just say, well, either H0 is mu is equal to 4.2, or in fact, it's not equal to 4.2. Um, we're interested in this case. Uh, you can see that it's a one-tailed test here. They're saying that, that mu should be greater than 4.2. So that comes from the question. They're saying that quality control is going to reject this hypothesis, the null hypothesis, if we're getting more than um, 0 0.6 floors per meter. Okay, so if mu is greater than 4.2. Okay. Uh, I mean, presumably, it could be also a two-tailed test in this case it could it could be that x is just simply not equal to, to 4.2 
Um, remember, though, that we didn't do two-tailed tests with Poisson the Poisson distribution or the binomial distribution. We only did that with a normal distribution um, because it's symmetrical, in fact. Um, so we're expecting it to be one-tailed. Uh, but I suppose you can interpret that, that here they're only going to reject the, the, the claim of the number of floors per meter if we're significantly higher. Okay, so that, those are the hypotheses. Um, for part C, it says find the critical region for the test. So again, we're getting something out. Let's just think about what the distribution looks like here. Again, it's positively skewed, I think. Uh, so we're going to get the average being sort of somewhere around 4.2. That's going to be the highest. And, you know, we're going to get it sort of tailing off like this on both sides. And it's going to slope down. So something like that. And this one will go to infinity, of course. Now that's your probability and that's your x value on here. Okay, so we're, we're looking for the probability of being in, in this region over here. That, that's got to be less than 5%. So again, I would do that by some trial and error on the calculator. I will do that now. I'm going to go to Scratchpad for this. And again, um, we're expecting that the highest percentage is around 4. So I'd probably start at around 10 for this one. So it's good probability, distribution, and... What do we want to do? We want to do uh, Poisson CDF. So Poisson CDF, the X value is going to be, oh, I've gone to normal PDF there, so sorry. I'm going to go Poisson, probability five. We're going to go Poisson CDF. Mu is equal to 4.2. The lower bound is going to equal to, let's say 10. The upper bound is something massive. So I'm putting 9999 in. Let's go OK. And I can see that that's 1%. So let me let me copy and paste this. So control C, control V, and I'm going to change that 10 to I want to catch more of a percentage. So let's try nine. OK, I can see that that's uh, just under three percent. So again, I'm going to do control paste just to check with eight. So eight to an extremely high number. It's going to give me the answer of um, 0 0.0639. So now that's above five percent. So that's no longer the critical region. So the critical region is nine and above. By trial and error, that's really quite quick. Uh, they do some extra method here. I wouldn't bother doing this. It's, it's overthinking things. Okay, so it's quite quick to get to the idea that X has got to be greater than or equal to nine. That's our critical region. So then find the probability of a type one error. Well, that's just the probability of getting uh, X is greater than or equal to nine. So that's 2.8%, it would seem. What did I get on my calculator here? I got 2.79% two, 2 to three significant figures. Okay, and a type two error is based on the fact that the mean is actually 0 0.72 floors per meter. Okay, so 0 0.72 multiplied by the number of meters which we have, which is seven, which is five point. So the, the truth is that we're having 5.04 errors on average per um, seven meters. So, so what we're trying to find for the for the type two error here is the probability that we're in the acceptance region. So in other words, that X is less than nine or less than or equal to eight, given that uh, lambda or, or uh, they're calling mu here, the average, same thing, is equal to um, 5.04. Okay, we can't see that down here, but I'm sure that's what it says. Okay, so that's just what we need to work out. Of course, you can do that on your calculator. There we go. And you get an answer of, um, so not 95% or not 1 minus 2.8%, it's 92.9%. Uh, okay, so that's easy to do using a, a Poisson distribution on your calculator talking about this thing here. Again, remember, what, what are we trying to find out there? In fact, we're trying to find out, we're trying to find out the fact that this distribution has a higher number of floors per meter. It's going to be slightly over here. So it's going to have a slightly higher, you know, distribution like this. Okay, so it's going to go that way and that way. And, and so we're saying, well, what's the chance of us being in the acceptance region? So the acceptance region was down here.
for the red red distribution, which we originally based this on. But now we're saying, well, okay, well, what's the probability being in that acceptance region for the real distributions that's behind this um, distribution? Okay, then, guys. Well, that's that. Uh, when you get your head around this and you've done a few of these questions, it's, um, they're quite satisfying ones to do, in fact. Okay, right, that just leaves, leaves us with a little bit on Bayes' theorem at the end. There's a particularly difficult chapter which is coming up, which is talking about, essentially, as I said, Bayes' theorem. And let's just click ahead on this one. So the next bit is starts with an investigation. And it doesn't actually give you any little boxes here, but basically we're going to be looking at this formula here. So that's coming up next. And then it leads you straight into the exercise. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.